because he was a created being. He didn't he didn't create himself. He was not like God. God was here in the beginning before the beginning began. So he was not. He was a created being. And he picks a fight with God and tries to cause insurrection in heaven. Mm. And just like he did that, I began to imagine something. Um, Sister Shannon tapped in all over in my message. I love how the Holy Ghost works. And so here it is. We're going to go back a little bit before we explore the gifts. We're going to talk about here is Jesus. Now, last week we understood how the master blew on them and they received the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Yeah. And he taught them. They were by his side for three and a half years. Yeah. And here is Jesus sending out. Now, when I did the math, he got, took 70, blew on them and sent them out. That's 35 teams. Mm. He was strategic and intentional about what he was to do. And they came back. They went into all the nations and all the, the areas that the Lord had sent them. And he came, they came back happy and excited. Because what he blew on them, they began to manifest the power of God. And they came back and they were excited. And they said, but Lord, you know what? Even the devils were subject unto us. Yes. How many of you know that we have power over the devil? Yes. Yes. Come on, people of God. Amen. See the victory is because we let him just do stuff. Yeah. We will not stand in our authority and take uh, power over his power. He yeah. said, Behold, I give you power over all the power yeah. of the enemy. Yeah. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Now, so why are we hurt about stuff? Because mm. we won't take the authority yeah. that's been given over his authority. Yeah. So the 70 came back and said, Lord, you thank you. You blew on us. We exhibited the power. And you know what? The devils were subject unto us. And this is what I like about Jesus. When he starts really telling people who he is, he said, yeah, I know. Yeah. I was in the beginning. I saw Satan fall like lightning. Yeah. But don't rejoice because you got power over him. Rejoice that your name is written. Yeah. That's where we rejoice even today. Yes, we have the power. Yes, we've been given the authority. But honey, sometimes you got to know that other people will pretend to cast out devils. Mm. So that's not the important thing. The important thing is that your name is written. Yeah. Yeah. And we have to make sure that we're doing that. So back to our story. Amen. We're going to Acts 2. Lord, thank you. Renew my memory. Thank you, Jesus. Acts 2, and I believe verse 5. Look at somebody and say, God's intentional. God's intentional. I'm going to respond to that throughout this message. And we're going to, I'm going to point to you and you're going to say, God's intentional. All right. In Acts 2, verse 5, here they have waited for the promise of the Father. He said, go and wait. About 120 of them. Wait for the promise of the Father. So they go into the upper room and they work. Peter begins to exhort them. Now, mind you, this is why you have to understand that God doesn't give up on people. Mm. Look in your mirror. Yeah. Yeah. Look to the right, to your left. And you'll see that God ain't gave up on anybody. Yeah. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. 16 verses, for God sent not his son into the world to, yeah. oh, y'all know the scripture, yeah. to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. So when we look at the world, mm. the world, he gave his son for the world. Now, we just have some people that just ran across your mind when you say God didn't do it for them. He couldn't have. They're just, they're the son of Satan. They're the daughter of Allah. God could not have wanted to save them, but I want you to know that he did. So when you look up that in, in the original language, the, the word for the world is the cosmos. Mm. Now, for the most part, we think that it means the stars and the heavens and the universes, the multiverses, all that kind of thing. But in this particular text, he's talking about the world, mankind, mm. that he died 
for the families, for men, for women, for children, wherever they were. In the ghetto, mm -hmm. in the condo, mm -hmm. in the wilderness, mm -hmm. in the palace, mm -hmm. in the tundra, mm -hmm. in the valley. Mm -hmm. Wherever there are people, his intention was to save them. Because you know why? Satan declared war. Mm -hmm. And he ended it. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So here we are, and we're going through all these things, and here God is intentional. That at Pentecost, the Jews were responsible for coming in and worshiping. Yeah. That came from everywhere. If you will look into the text, it will tell you that they were come from everywhere. Every, everywhere the Jews were in different countries. Can you get with this? Mm -hmm. Asians, Africans, mm -hmm. Romans, mm -hmm. Mesopotamians, Cretes. When you look up the original where these people came from, it was because they were coming from every nation. Because they have been spread out. So here they come to celebrate the Passover. Um, last week, um, Pastor Soso -so told, told us and taught us, and maybe we have learned that the Passover was the passing over when they were under Pharaoh, and they had to have the blood over the lentils of their home so that the death angel would pass over them. So here he is. God is intentional for the celebration of that Passover. The blood of the Lamb has already been slain. And he's calling his people. And here they are. They're praying. And in the midst of the prayer, here comes the descent of the Holy Ghost. Here comes the power from heaven that was promised. And he be, they began to speak in tongues. Yes. So what is that? They get so mucho. They get outside. I'm amazed at how we can speak in tongues in here and don't do nothing outside. Yeah. Home neighborhoods, home communities, do we know our neighbors? Do, are we in such a hurry that we just pass by and then we're convicted, oh yeah, I had a word for her, or I could have prayed for her. Or you know the favorite one, it's like, pray for me, and we say, touch Lord. Come on. Yeah. Come on, come on. God is pulling for more of us. Yes. So the equipping and the releasing that we've already experienced, this is what he is coming to do. You have the equipment. The Holy Ghost is like a big suitcase. Everything that you need is in it. But you have to open it up and experience what's in there. So here they were. They're coming out of the upper room and they get outside and every, where everybody was gathered, all these nations, and I'm telling you, whatever language they spoke, it wasn't like we all in here speaking English. We would go back to some of our, our earlier uh, upbringings or wherever our families were from, there was another language. So whatever language they spoke, they heard. This wasn't untold tongues. These were diverse. Yeah. Yeah. So this was the miracle. I love how God does this. He gathers everybody, and then he begins to speak to them in their own language. Yeah. And they're yeah. like wondering, yeah. yeah. what the what? What is this? They said they're speaking the miracles of God. So this is what God is beginning to do. He's so intentional. He's intentional. Yes. So here, this is what he begins to do. So they're out and they're wondering, but guess what happens? So previous to this, and you'll find this thread in all of the scriptures, this is what happens. We're hungry and we're thirsting for revival, but can I tell you something? There are certain things that have to happen for revival. Yes. Yes. We can't just sit up and just feel like God is going to descend and we can't even enter in. We don't want to worship. We don't want to raise our hands. We just want him to come and knock us over. Amen. Not going to happen. Now for some of you, if you want to, if you want a solid experience, if you want to get knocked off of all your stuff, that can happen too. But I'm encouraging you to please cooperate with the Holy Ghost because it's so much easier. Right, right, right. So here he is. This is what happens. We'll see it through scripture. They prayed. The fire fell. And then Peter began to preach to them. Men and brethren. This is what's happened. Oh, this is what the Lord said. David said this. And he began to go through the scriptures. Because they're Jews now. So he has to begin to preach. And then here he, he drops the bomb. So Jesus, the son of God, who you crucified. Uh -huh. <laughs> and then it says their hearts were pricked. Mm. The hearts were pricked. 
and say, okay, what, 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 what are we going to do? He said, repent and be baptized. Yes. Every one of you for the remission of your sins. And they did it. And what happened? The church grew. It says 3,000 of them came into the Lord. Yes. Then we go on. That's only in chapter 2. Chapter 3. They got the temple. It says the beautiful gate. Now here's the oxymoron. There's a beautiful gate. Now let me back up a little bit before we go there. So there were things, not only were they baptized and, and, and the church grew, but there was freedom. They gave away all this stuff. Everybody that had a need, there were no needs in the church. Everybody that had something, they would give to those that didn't have. Everything said they had all things in common. So the things that we find in the church today, the body of Christ, would not exist if we had real revival. If we would get to the place that our hearts were not so hardened, that we weren't so stubborn, and that whatever it is that somebody had a need, we would release that to them. But there are two things wrong with that. It's a double pride. It's a, it's a pride. Uh -huh. It's a two-edged sword of pride. Number one, I got mine. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm going to keep mine. Mm -hmm. And then there's the other pride that keeps bondage where you're ashamed that you have a need. Uh -huh. yeah. And you won't tell nobody uh -huh. yes. that you have a need. Yes. God hates it. Yes, he does. He hates it. Because he hates it because there shouldn't be any needs in the body. Yes. And he hates it that it's people that he's blessed with the means to yes. help those that don't have it right. won't give it away. Come on yes. So in the real church, somebody say the real church. The real yes. church. They didn't have that problem. They gave all, whatever was needed, they gave it. Everybody that had a need, they were blessed and the church grew. And you know what, this is what I like about it. And I believe it was in this chapter. I believe it's either in the second or the third chapter, but it said they were happy. Uh -huh. They had food. Uh -huh. Everybody had, it was the first happy meal. Mm. <laughs> I don't care what it does. See, everything that happens is in the book. They just copy. They just copy. They say everybody could eat. Now you know if you were hungry, you want to eat. You want to eat well. Everybody had food. They were happy. They had a singleness of heart. What does that mean? There was no double-mindedness. Yeah. Everybody had the same vision. Yeah. Everybody had the same goal. Yeah. They didn't have a bunch of factions. They didn't have yeah. everything that was different than what the main goal was, which was exhorting Christ. Yeah. Yeah. So here we are at the beautiful gate. Come on. Amen. Beautiful. It's beautiful. The Bible said it was beautiful. Mm -hmm. Then there was a man. Mm -hmm. Lame. Yeah, yeah. At the beautiful gate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Don't that look kind of strange? Mm -hmm. You had a beautiful house of worship and you got lame people. They were unable to care for themselves. And they said he had been in this condition his whole life. And he was at least 40 years old. So can you imagine with your able-bodied self that you're able to get up and go and do whatever you have. But there's somebody, and we've seen them in our society. They can't make it. Some of us and then in the spiritual, lame. Jesus. Scripture says he looked at them. Y'all know the people at the freeway. They stand yeah. up with the sign. They try to get your eyes and you're uh, looking all over there. Yes. <laughs> you don't want milk yet? No. Oh, it's a beautiful day. Uh, Instead of making eye contact, uh -huh. I'm doing like Peter did. Mm -hmm. Now, Peter said, Don't glance at me. Look steadfastly at me. I want you to, because what I got, what you're going to see in my eyes is the power of God. And what is the power of God? Love. You won't see a disdain because you can walk. I'm not going to discredit you because this is something that happened to you. Look at me, because what I got, I'm finna give. Mm. He finally got that. And what does it say? That thing got a hold of that man and he pulled him up. And it says, immediately yeah. cool. his bones received strength. Yeah. Yeah. 
Now, I don't know about you, but this morning I was coming down the, down the stairs and Mama Joyce and my knee gave way like, oh. <laughs> and it hurt. And I was like, no, not today. Not today. Not today. Not today. Bones receive strength. Bones receive strength. Bones receive strength. Bones receive strength. So it's that kind of power that God wants to meet us every day, everywhere we are. He wants us to exhibit that, not just for ourselves, but there's some lame people, y'all. Yes. There's some people that need our help. Yes. So what are we doing with all of our praying and all of our fasting, asking for cards and, and money and husbands? The Bible said he'll give you the kingdom. All that is in the kingdom. Yeah. You ain't got to ask for it, just position yourself right. Yeah. Yeah. That's all you have to do. He'll do that. He'll do that, but we just have to get into alignment. Yeah. These people were praying. It wasn't it wasn't restricted prayer. You know, we pray, uh, okay, that's it. Ten minutes, you got ten minutes. No. They stayed there. Brother David, you were right on it. Yes. They tarried there. So you know what? Those of us from the old church are going to be promised. <laughs> now I just passed through the church, the grand old church, because I was raised up Baptist. Come on. Tell it. With the hymns and all that. I love that. I could sing six stanzas, stanzas of amazing grace. But that's not it. The thing about tarrying a double shot is waiting in the presence of God until he endures us with power. Tell you off in five different languages, even in the Holy Ghost. Oh, 
and we won't curse. Wow. Y'all know how saints do. Wow. You know? And if we don't say a word, we give you some eye action. Oh, no. oh, yeah, I, I can't do it, but <laughs> neck action. Mm. Neck action. We have all kind of negative body language. Yeah. <laughs> And we have to, we to just get to the place where we, we get in humility. Yeah. Because humility heals the neck. Yeah. Because <laughs> that neck is a pride thing. So the eyes are a pride thing. Humility heals that. Yeah. Yeah. So here we are. So you know the devil got mad. You start casting devils out and healing people and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. The first time they said, oh, oh, these are unlearned men. Mm -hmm. What are they doing with all this? So yeah, yeah. they must be speaking the truth. So there's miracle signs and wonders following them. Yeah. So, okay, we're just going to warn them. And what did they do? Mm. They ran to pray. Father, we thank you yes. that you have given us the boldness to preach in your name. And we will not. And they prayed so much. This is the kind of prayer, prayer meeting I'm talking about. Yes. They prayed so much that the place was shaking. Yes. Yes. And everybody in the place received the Holy Ghost. Yes. When was the last time? Yes. We were in that, our prayer meetings. Come on, saints. We can have just a few little people at the intercessory prayer group that's meeting faithfully. But we don't want to be a part. Wow. Mm -hmm. Our nation. Yes. We are close to a president pushing a button. Yep. Come on. Come on and we're not praying. Mm -hmm. I've seen all over Facebook. Oh my God, this is happening in Syria. Pray, get on Facebook and pray. That's yes. right. That's right. Yes. Oh, help us, Lord. Tell him, tell him. We just said, I send the angels to bombard. No, you don't. Jesus. The angels is dusty. Your angels is dusty. <laughs> they haven't moved. Why? Because you won't position your heart right. Like Because yeah. without getting in alignment, there is not going to be revival. Yeah, yeah. So there are things that happen after the dropping of the gifts. There are things that happen. There is a, an atmosphere of power, but there is a position of humility and dependence. And when David was saying that, we need him and we have to know that we need him. We can't do anything without him. Yeah. Can't do anything. But you can do some stuff. But will he get the glory? Yeah. 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 So down through the scriptures, Acts, the Acts of the Apostles, mm -hmm. one of the reasons why that they were able to do what they did was because they had an impartation. Yes. Mm -hmm. They had experience. One of the things that I always encourage everybody, get, make you a blessing book. Get you a binder and call it a blessing. Stop writing down things that God has put in there. Because there will come a time where the devil will tell you, no, he ain't, he ain't doing it this time. And you know what we do? We just, we just drink that whole cup of discouragement. And we get just dragged and we tired. Uh, as if God has never blessed you with anything. All you have to do is remember there was a commandment of the Jews to rehearse. Yes. Rehearse the word. Rehearse without the yes. rehearse. 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 Write it. Read it. Rehearse. Speak it. What happens with that? Even in school, they would do that. Repet repetition is the best form of learning. Over and over. That's how we learn out. Yeah. That's how we learn. Yeah. One and one is two. Two and two is four. We learned that by repetition. So why do we just throw the Bible away? Why? All kind of stuff. Is happening. We won't even apply the word. We just drink all that cup of discouragement. Woe is me. 
as if Jesus died in vain. All that he went through, all the suffering, all the mocking, they spat in his face, they pulled his beard, they beat him. <laughs> then they stabbed him like he's on the cross. Mm. And even with all of that, he had enough compassion to look over there at the thief. The other one, he ain't got no good sense, but this one right here. <laughs> Listen, I'm done, I was wrong, help me. Okay, this day could be in paradise with me. Yeah. Yeah. So simple. Even though they're stabbing me, and you see what they did right here on this here. It wasn't just the head, it was the wrist. Yeah. Right. It was the wrist. Through the bone, and you can imagine his weight pulling through there. Yeah. yeah, I want you to get it. Yeah. On his feet, his so they didn't just nail one foot. They put both feet together and then drove the spikes through his feet. Yeah. to the cross, and then the way down on his yeah. mm -hmm. And you sitting up here being discouraged. Mm -hmm. He could have gave up right then. Me, I, mm -hmm. <laughs> Father, I voluntarily give up the ghost now. <laughs> <laughs> when I saw them, when they, was, when they start pulling my hair off, they pull my wig off, it's over. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody don't catch hands. <laughs> <laughs> We can't go through nothing. Do you understand what I'm saying? Somebody talking about us, oh my God, they're talking about me. Stand up in your authority and command the word curse to be broken. Amen. 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 You just don't know what they did. We put too much emphasis on the things of Satan. Yeah. And not enough on the things of God. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody lift your hands. Repeat after me. Lord, Lord, I refuse, I refuse to give Satan, to give Satan more, power, more power, more authority, more authority in, my life. in my life. I will stop, I will stop exalting, his name exalting his name in my life, in my life and I tear down, and I tear down that, idolatry. that idolatry in Jesus' name. It's idolatry when we do that. It's idolatry. So here we are, beautiful gate. Okay, he gets healed. Everybody around the square say, he got healed. Wait, he's been sick 40 years. How is this possible? He got healed. You healed? You're coming. You really got healed? Well, we don't see. I know you said you healed now, but let's wait till tomorrow. <laughs> You're going to get that cane. We're going to see. We're going to see. We're going to get that, that support. So Satan comes to torment you, to lean on stuff. You ain't got no business. Uh, After you receive the promise, that crutch. Now, speaking of spiritual things, that cross, that thing that you used to is familiar. It diminishes the power of God in your life. Because what it's saying is that I don't believe God. I know he said it, but he might not do it for me. Yes, he will do it for you. Yes. So they come through and they threaten them. And so here he goes again. They, there are so many instances in the book of Acts. And I'm, I'm praying that you would take a moment and begin to study it. Here we have, they're coming through again. There's another opportunity. And preaching opens up. He reaches out to them, 5,000 and say, mm -hmm. this is in a day, one, one, one preach word, one preach word. And he continues, Peter continues, he gets to Cornelius' house. Mm -hmm. Now the Bible said that Cornelius was a, an upright man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It says he, he loved God yes. and all his house. Even his servants were saved, or, or his servants loved God, because he didn't know. But this man, who was not saved per se because he was a Gentile, he prayed so much until he got an angel. Yeah. 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 We shot our nine and they got, we can't get a win. <laughs> <laughs> we can't get a win. We can't get a cool breeze. <laughs> Here comes the angel. And said, so you know what, Cornelius? Your prayers have gotten up to heaven. Yeah. Oh. 
and I'm coming for what you're saying. Yeah. So while you're playing, I'm finna just pass somebody here that knows him and is supposed to uh, come back and visit. You wow. just hold tight. Yeah. So <laughs> Peter is visiting somebody's house. I believe it was Saul the Tanner, somebody anyway. He got hungry, so while he was waiting for the food to prepare, he goes up on the, on the, uh, on the uh, roof. Then he sees a vision, yeah. and then she comes down. Uh -huh. <laughs> He's like, okay, I'm hungry now. I'm seeing all this food up in here. Yeah. But because I'm a Jew, this uh -huh. stuff here, I can't eat this. I can't eat these pig feet. Uh -huh. <laughs> I, I can't do it. I, I can't eat whatever all this is. The voice of the Lord said, kill and eat. He said, no, 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 no. That's a trick question. I can't eat that, Lord. I've never eaten anything according to the law for the Jews. I'm, I'm, I'm ceremonially clean. But I, I can't eat that. I'm sorry. I'm hungry, so maybe I'm hallucinating. Y'all know when you get real hungry? You know? He said, nope. Came down again. Rise, kill and eat. He said, No. How many times the Lord tell you to do something? You'd be like, nah, that ain't God. <laughs> no, I didn't hear you. Let's say, look, I rebuke you. <laughs> Went up, came down the third time. And Peter finally got the revelation. He's like, okay. So they said, look, there are three men. I love the specificity of scripture. He says, there are three men that are coming, and you need to go with them because there is a man over here, Cornish, in all of his house, and he need deliverance. And his and I love him, and just go do what I say. So just as he was saying, the men came. They took him over there. They get to Cornelius' house. And, and Peter's a little perplexed. You mean you got an angelic visitation? Yeah. You're not even saying. Uh -huh. You're a Gentile. Mm -hmm. He said, well, now. this is what's happening. That's why you're here. Uh -huh. <laughs> Obviously, I prayed and God sent for you. So what? Mm -hmm. He began to teach them by the scriptures. Mm -hmm. And then said, you want the Holy Ghost. You're already a believer. He said, yeah. He said, okay, give us the Holy Ghost. We want it. Bam. Simple. God. The Holy Ghost fell. And this was the ushering in of the Gentiles. Thank you, Courtney. Amen. Amen. These are the kind of things that happen in the book of Acts. But just know this. This is what happens when we surrender. Mm -hmm. yes. Power. We should be overflowing with testimonies. Yes. And I like the testimonies. Thank you for a raise. Thank you for money. Thank you for, thank you for honey. Thank you for cars. Thank you for God. Can we have some consistent miracles? Yes. 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 That's why I love prophetic evangelism. I enjoyed Mama Joyce when she was talking about how they were. This is the kind of power we need for everybody, not just an evangelistic department. Yes. Not just for an evangelistic department. Yes. Not just for the evangelistic department. Come on. Yes. God has a heart for his people. Yes. I'll share this one um, story and then we'll be gone. I got up one morning, I said, no, I don't want a car. I was back in California, so I'm, I'm walking to the car deal. Maybe a mile and a half from my house. And here was this woman, Hispanic woman. She barely spoke English, but she sp spoke enough for me to understand. Mm -hmm. She wanted to sell me a candle. You know those tall Catholic candles? She had many things, and it was kind of raggedy. It was kind of raggedy. <laughs> so she's holding this to me, and I'm like, I'm trying to buy a car. We ain't trying to buy no candles. But then the Lord began to turn my heart toward her. Why is she selling candles? Why is she selling raggedy candles? And I said, so you're a Christian? Yes, yes, I believe Jesus. Mm. I said, oh, that's wonderful. Is your church around here? And she says, yeah. Then I can read all between that. Yeah. And I says, well, why do you, why do you say this? Well, because I'm hungry. Mm. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> Bye, Gar. <laughs> 
So she said, I said, you're hungry? She says, I just need little money, little money for me and my cat. I was like, okay, Jesus. I said, well, if you walk with me, let's go to the store. And her eyes got big. And she was a little, you know, older woman, older woman, selling crazy candles. Mm. So I said, okay. So we walk, it must have been about five blocks. We walk to the store, we get in the store. The first thing she goes is to get a can of, of, of cat food. But I discerned that she was gonna eat that. Mm. And I said, no, 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 no. Mm. I took it back to the meat portion. I said, get what you want. And she would point for that, like a half pound of hamburger. Mm. I just said, no. I said, you see that thing? I said, give me that package. It had mm. hamburger and steak and chops and you know, breakfast, was whatever the meat was. And I said, come on. I said, get some bread, get some milk, get some vegetables. And her eyes got big. And she began to cry. Mm. And then she said, can I have a pack of cigarettes? I said, no. Because <laughs> <laughs> all the while I'm hearing the rattling in her chest. So I know that God was setting her up for a miracle. We paid for the food and we come out. I said, see, a lot of times we want to ignore that. We want to go and lay hands right there. Yes. You know? yep. Open up their heart and eyes yeah. first. Yeah. Let them know the God of Scripture that loves and cares for them. Yeah. Understand that you're on assignment. Yeah. Understand that you're on assignment every day. Yeah. Ain't no weekend breaks. Yeah. Ain't no weekend breaks. You know, we, you don't punch your time card and say, okay, I'm off till Monday. No. Mm. Here she is. I said, I can't, buy, I can't buy you no cigarettes. So I said, because I hear you wheezing. What is that? The doctor says, I have emphysema and it's gotten worse. I said, I know. But we're outside and she's got bags. And she's, you know, she's smiling. But her hands were all clenched up like this. I said, what's wrong with your hands? I said, oh, arthritis. I said, well, can I pray for you? So you know she opened for prayer now because I'm a yeah. yeah, yeah. She's open. She was like the man at the beautiful gate, yes. looking for something, which she thought maybe she, he was looking for coins. Yeah, right. yes. We always find people looking for coins, <laughs> but what will we give them in exchange? Wow. Yes, Sometimes you can give them coins and they just go back to their addictions. Yeah. <laughs> give them who you have on the inside. Yes. Yes. Give them the Christ in you, the hope of glory. Give them the answer to their problems. The healer, the great physician. That's what they want. I said, can I pray for you? She goes, oh, yes, Miss Pamela. Yes, yes. Thank you so much for this food. And I just real gently just touched her on the shoulder. And I said, Father, I thank you that your power rose over this arthritis and this emphysema in Jesus' name. Now, whatever happened after that, I was in shock. Because her hands started going like this. She put her bags down. She started taking deep breaths. She would pick up. There must have been maybe six bags. The rainy channel was walking fast down the street, and she didn't have a breathing problem up until then. And I was just like, Father, forgive me because I would have missed yeah. seeing that little woman come into the full manifestation of your power. Because yeah. you know, sometimes we just, we from touch and agree, we're going to pray and we don't expect nothing. Yeah. 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 So God is coming to lift your expectation. Yeah. 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 Father, we thank you how you've already moved today. Thank you that you're the great exhibitionist. Yes. Yes. That you're revealing yourself to your people. Yes. But I pray that we will have a brand new hunger and thirst yes. for the God of glory. Yes. That we won't be intimidated by our own stupid stuff. Yes. That your power swallows up everything 
that is not like you and that we can trust you. You are trustworthy. You are trustworthy. We can trust you. We know that you're the God of the Bible, but we need to let the God of the Bible work in our lives, Father. The signs, wonders, and miracles that you show in the scripture, you have imprinted that upon us. It's in our DNA. We need to let it out. And we promise to give you the glory. No glory belongs to us. We promise to walk in humility. We give you all of our hang-ups and all of our, just all our stuff. We thank you today you came in like a bulldozer. Ha, glory. Thank you. Thank you for destroying every yoke of bondage. Thank you for taking care of every fear. Thank you, Father, for uprooting. Thank you, oh God. Oh, thank you for divine exchange today. Taking our brokenness for your life. For your abundance.
okay, not just getting delivered from habits or sins, but we get delivered in our pocketbooks as well. When you get delivered in your money area, you deliver.